Shoot it. Another miss. Pruitt, who had such a strong day, off to Smith. And that just about does it. Wisconsin will run the winning streak to 15 consecutive games. It was in serious jeopardy in the final minutes here. Wisconsin has poise. They have veteran experience. They never beat themselves. They have a veteran older club that is very good. Illinois led by three with four minutes to go, but Wisconsin closed on a 12-2 run to put it away. That's 15 in a row for Wisconsin. They knock off Illinois at Assembly Hall 71 to 64. For Rick Majerus, I'm Dave O'Brien as we say so long from Champaign. Now we toss it to Ron Franklin and Fran Priscilla. Oh, okay, gentlemen, thanks so much as Wisconsin wins that one there. In Champaign, our situation, it has been KU, the number five team in the nation, getting off to a red hot start. Four straight turnovers by Texas Tech, and it's an eight nothing ball game. Fran, talk about how Tech started and the changes they've just made. Well, Ron, the, the main key for Tech is transition defense, but when you turn the ball over on the offensive end, it's gonna leave some opportunities for Kansas. They've taken advantage. Khan with the block there of Zeno. Rush at the other end. Knocked out of bounds, it'll go back to the Red Raiders. Well, Rush with a chance to go to the rim, that time overpassing a little bit, but very good start. Coach Knight's gone to the bench and gone to a little more athletic group. Daryl Dora, number 44 in the lineup. He's the one that broke the hearts of KU fans here two years ago on Valentine's Day. Inside, and the easy two. A great feed from Michael Prince just in the ball game. Chalmers at the other end, and a jump ball is called, and Dora is the man who got a hand on the ball. Well, Bob Knight went with the bigger group to combat Sasha Khan inside. A couple turnovers by Plefka. Now back to a group Michael Prince had started eight, nine straight. Also, so Yagic started in the ball game. He started against Khan to give him more size. Yep. Now Dora in the ball game, which does not lose you any size, but Prince in the game, and he's your defensive guy and your garbage guy. As Zeno hands the three. Good ball movement that time. Motion offense, a lot of screening. Make it a two. It's eight four. Arthur in the ball game for Kansas. Double zero. That's a travel. Larry Rose, our referee today, and the two umpires in this ball game are Danny Hooker and Hal Lusk. So 8-4, Kansas on top. 15-55 left in this opening quarter. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Burger King, who remind you to have it your way. for Kansas leads the uh, tech students not accustomed to the ice and snow that has got the last day and a half some have really had to pay the price he had buses out trying to pick them up because all the parking lots had not been cleared Ron Franklin along with Fran Frischella turnovers early really plagued the Red Raiders and got them stumbling out of the blocks you're right Ron transition defense is the first key for Texas Tech today and then taking care of the ball is the second one and they're not mutually exclusive when you turn the ball over in the half court you're going to leave this court open for a very very athletic Jayhawk group and early on they've taken advantage of that well, Coach Knight called an early timeout, and uh, it may be very cold outside, but it was very warm in that huddle, and you could tell the guys were saying, well, won't that horn sound anytime yes. soon now? Well, remember, Bill Self has gone inside early uh, in games recently because of Sasha Khan's play. That's why Bob Knight went big. It did not pay off. Let's see if the quicker group does. Dora for three. Unlucky, in and out. Missed on the three-pointer there. And these fans have recollections of that three that beat Kansas here. It was at this end of the floor they're on right now. Rush for three. Let's see if Texas Tech gives Kansas the long shot today and pack the defense in. Here the Big 12 standings. Kansas and AM at three and O. Oh, Texas with uh, one loss, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech with one loss and the two wins. A big one in Stillwater tonight, Oklahoma State and AM.
But the mistake coming off a huge triple overtime win over Texas. Right, the turnaround, partially blocked by Prince. They're calling air ball. And Bill Self wanted a foul on the play. He's up and talking to Danny Hooker. You can see the strategy by Texas Tech. They're going to play inside the three-point line and force Kansas to shoot those jumpers. Look what happened. Prince <laughs> lost his shoe. There's a vacant seat right there. <laughs> Someone who's caught in the ice and snow. So he just sits down right there and reties. Awfully nice of Al Luff. Al Luff. Of course, Tech had the basketball. Much better ball movement the last three or four possessions by Texas Tech. Dora. Missed the runner. They battle inside, and there's Prince, and he has it taken away by Chalmers. Gotta always know where Mario Chalmers is on the court. Arthur. Jarius Jackson out of the wing. Good job in transition by the Jayhawks. Mario Chalmers picks up the foul. His first. Collins comes in and Chalmers will come to the bench. Talk about Collins. He was going to be one of our highlight guys had we gotten on on time. He uh, had a career high last week. Yes, he did. 23 points, Ron. And Bob Knight said this Kansas team basically has eight starters. You bring Arthur and Collins off the bench, you don't lose a thing. Collins, one of those freshmen that truly shows no fear whatsoever. Tech has done a nice job of stemming that early momentum by Kansas. Prince. Lost it. Collins got a hand on it. Now taken away by Wright. The Prince tries for the steal. They trap on Wright. Blocked by Dora. And I think fouled by Dora. Yes. Yeah. Sharon Collins, young man out of Crane Tech in Chicago. McDonald's All-American. Coming off a career high, he's playing 19 minutes a game. Really gives Kansas a deep threat, not just the ball handling, but 43% from the three-point line. We've been at 8-4 for several minutes now. Robinson gets it. Career high against Missouri last Monday night. And most impressive, Ron, the young guy scored seven of the Jayhawks' last nine points in what was a very, very close ball game. Mike Anderson's group showed up, came to play, and we had some fun in there. Yeah, it was a fun ball game. And you know, we're going to get a chance to show it, but again, second ball game in a row where Rush came up with the big defensive stop, creating a, a shot that was not makeable, and his defense, not just his offense, has been winning for KU. Very and Zeno knocks down the three. I'm sorry. Well, and he knocked it on Rush, who uh, H. Knight has got to guard a difficult defender in this league. Inside to Arthur. It's not there. Crashing the boards. Jackson. Ball is knocked the back out. Prince and Dora there. Jackson up on the wing. Dora to the hoop, and he'll score. Texas Tech does a great job of ball faking, not just on the perimeter, but inside. Now, in, now ball faking, but also ball movement. The, yes. the floor looks balanced when it did not early. Well, you're absolutely right. Freshman from Dallas knocks it down. But you're right, Ron. They, when they are at their best, they move the ball well. And they fake with the ball well. Jackson passes up the three, had it, but elected not to take it. Here's Zeno. Prince just inside the three-point line. One of those areas the sophomore from Dallas has improved on, making that 16-footer. 
and may need his contributions both ends of the floor. 10 4 run by Texas Tech. I'll tell you what, he has as good a low post package as any freshman in the country in terms of knowing where he is and then just a feathery touch. And Arthur, obviously, not a small person, but he shoots it with a feather like touch, as Fran said. Jackson too hard off the back iron. Good matchup, Ron. Robinson on Jackson. Ball knocked out of bounds by Dora. And now a couple of substitutions coming in. Kahn will come in. Chalmers will check back into the lineup for KU. And there's a timeout. Texas Tech down by four to KU, the number five team in the country. We'll be right back. That was an awesome show. Awesome. Hey, would you mind? No problem. Me too. So, are you the bass player or the drummer? I'm not in the band. I'm just here for the Bud Light. Who's Penn? Johnny! Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Who's Todd Schischler? Listen, I don't care if you want to sell yourself for less, but a buck? People are psyched about this, Dad. You'd know that if you'd pull your head out of your bun. Watch it, Burger Boy. Whopper Jr. for a buck. Bringing some attitude to the BK value menu. Dave Revson in our Sports Center in game studios. Check in on LSU and Arkansas. LSU have been struggling on the offensive end. They turn it over there. Gary Irvin on the other end finishes for the Hogs as Arkansas, the big lead right now on LSU. Indiana went out big on UConn, but the Huskies have cut it to four. Alrighty, in our situation, boy, a lot of ice and snow on the South Plain. And as you see this statue of Buddy Holly downtown, as someone in the truck suggested, the song might have gone every day. It gets a little colder. <laughs> 14 to 10 our score. Four point balls, KU. Well, remember, Kansas jumped out to that 8 0 start. Some ill advised turnovers early, but Texas Tech has settled down. <laughs> And the two substitutes in the ball game that I talked about just before we went away. Khan, who started, as well as Chalmers, both back into the lineup for the Jayhawks. Bill Self has gone to Sasha Khan early in the last five or six games. He's made it pay off, averaging about 13 in his last three. Khan was a very excited young man after that game last week in, in Ames because it's kind of like he broke out of a, a mini drought. And he was extremely pleased with his own play. And Arthur, six points for him early. And you don't necessarily count on him for this many early points. Not in Big 12 play. He averaged about 19 in his first five games when Khan was hurt. But lately he'll settle down. Dora for three. He rolled Khan to sleep, Ron. Khan had pretty good position. Didn't think Dora would shoot it so quickly. Khan out high with a screen. Stolen by Zeno. I save. Burgess. It's an old axiom in coaching. It's dangerous to get Bob Knight more than three days to prepare for an opponent. Arthur claims he was hit on the elbow, but it came up an air ball. Check Julian it. Wright prepares to check back in. Dora for three. And Khan, the head coach, is pointing at him saying, that's two that you didn't get out on him with. 30 seconds will go away. We'll be right back. So we are back in Texas Tech on top for the first time in the ball game, 18 to 16. It's a 14 to 6 run. Now watch Ron pick and roll right here as he comes off. Dora's going to pop back, but Russell Robinson is going to stunt at Dora. 
until Khan could get back. You see, he's in no man land. Excuse me, Chalmers. Khan can't get back there that quickly unless Chalmers will bump out there and help a little bit. Done a good job of keeping Kansas on the perimeter. Right. Not there. The tip inside by Rush. Tipped it out of bounds. Red Raider basketball. See, and Bill Self is telling Julian right now, don't settle for the jump shot early in the possession. And remember, Tech's strategy is to force that jumper. I, I happened to watch Hoosiers yesterday during the snowstorm. Four passes, remember? That's right. Four passes exactly. before you shoot it. <laughs> Just don't get caught watching the paint dry. Right. Block the shot. Comes down with him on his knees. And the possession error says it will go to Kansas. How about Julian right now guarding Dowro Dora, Ron? We've seen Dora enough to know he doesn't get a lot inside. So they went with the quicker right on Dora. Let's see if that pays off. Let's see if right was the correct move or right was the wrong move. That's right. Or wrong. <laughs> Collins moves to his left. Swishes a three-pointer. He's the one guy you got to be worried about. The most consistent deep shooter so far this season for the Jayhawks. You see now Khan will guard Prince, not a scoring threat. Wright moves over to Dora. Burgess. See those two-man basketball plays on each side of the court. Dora against Wright. Collins comes over to help out. Shot clock is at five. Down to four, down to three. Jackson air ball. Well, to college basketball continues on ESPN as Georgia Tech takes on North Carolina. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV is part of Student Spirit Week on ESPN 9 Eastern Time. Hard to believe Tech without a road win in the last 12 months going back to January. I'm sure those kids are in the hotel room hearing that right now and maybe taking heed. <laughs> Daryl Dora obviously has uh, some blood. John Murray, the uh, trainer, is attending to him right now. And you can see he's wearing the gloves. So substitute Plepka comes back into the ball game for the Red Raiders. You've got to know where Collins is. Back out to Chalmers. 4-3. Got it. How many times Monday night did we say how the penetration of a quick guard like Collins can open the court up? Well, that's going to eight minutes to play in this opening half. Jackson. Nice. Up inside. Great look, Prince. They a great job of recognizing the trap on the ball screen. Prince, Prince flooded the basket. Lefka found him. Watch this, Ron. Pick and roll. They slip Prince underneath. Wide open. Good strategy versus the trap. Kansas by two. Coach Knight is hot. One of the reasons the last play underneath the sequence, I should say, underneath the basket, he thought that Julian Wright had thrown an elbow, and the Tech player is the man who was called for the foul. Well, this was a point of emphasis this week in terms of uh, making sure that you don't throw those loose elbows. It's a violation if there's no contact. So Kansas leads at 22 to 20. 745 left until halftime of the inbounds pass. Tried to roll it, did Julian Wright. 
to uh, his teammate, and it was just way too far in front of Darrell Arthur. Ron, Julian Wright is a very good passer, but he overpasses. 47th turnover on the season versus 37 assists, and he's got to shoot that ball. Zeno, too hard, air ball. On the follow, Plefka will go to the line, and I believe it's going to be Arthur. Well, Bob Knight, very sensitive, obviously, about elbows, going back to that Oklahoma game. Longar Longar blocked Rizvich. Rizvich will miss the rest of the season. The Big 12 suspended Longar for two games. Ron, you and I have talked about this on a number of occasions. The officials, in my mind, have got to get a hold of those loose elbows early in games, make it a point of emphasis. I know the OU people did not agree with the suspension, but the point of the matter is we saw, we have seen games since that it is it is still there. Obviously, no player has been intimidated by the action taken against Longer Longer. That was the point, I thought. Well, you could call it a violation if there's no contact, and obviously if there's contact, you call it a foul, but you must get to that play early. <laughs> Don't know if that young man will will ever play again. He's certainly not going to play this season. Five different fractures in that uh, in the orbital bone, and then there was other surgery to prop up the eye. The plastic surgery and a sinuses uh, specialist to come in to make sure there was no infection. And it was a very detailed thing. And uh, they're fortunate they have a great hospital here in Lubbock that can handle that kind of situation and the doctors. Tied at 22. Rush. Rush unlucky on that shot. It did everything but go down. A lot of white jerseys in that paint area for Texas Tech. Kansas has done a very nice job shadowing Jackson today. Well, they have. I was just... Prince turns it over. I was just looking at the official stats there, and he does not have a point so far. Over the back, Jackson. And Ron, even though Brandon Rush is a pretty proficient shooter, this is a game of percentages. Bob Knight is going to allow those Kansas jump shooters to have that shot all day long. Outside maybe of Collins, they're going to live with that. Jarius, you see what he's averaging on the year, almost 21 points a ball game, and nothing here today, and we're about to go under six minutes to play in the opening half. Give credit to the KU defense, what they have been stifling with at times this year, That's right. particularly against really good people. And they've got three guys that can guard Jackson, Chalmers and Collins as well. This is what Russell Robinson does best. Shot clock is at seven. Gora with the jump hook, and he got it. Very smooth. They've done a nice job of recognizing those traps on the ball screens, and they get it out quickly. Texas Tech goes back on top. First time they've led it since the 10-11 mark. Honduras three-pointer. Rush stepped on the end line. You see one, him popping himself on the chest, my bad. Ron, one of the things Tech has done so well is they're acting like they're guarding Kansas perimeter, but they're really shading the post. Nice look inside, Zeno. <laughs> Tell you what, Dora has played a big part in this uh, comeback. He's an excellent passer, Ron, and Zeno knows how to move without the ball. Charlie Burgess picks up the foul. Ron, watch how well Martin Zeno uses this screen and slip into the lane. They're really good at that. He looks like he's going to screen. His man goes with the com man coming off the screen, and he slips it to the goal. Well done. A little ball fake, and he yep. took it up nicely. Five minutes left in his opening hand. Arthur, the turnaround. And the jam followed by Rush. One of the few easy inside opportunities today for Kansas. So it's back to a two-point ball game. Zeno with a two-pointer. 
Another example of how he uses that down screen. That time a defender went underneath and he went behind it. Plefka picks up the foul. Boy, there, is there anybody better than Martin Zeno reading a screen? He's had three years of this. Watch him now, Ron. Zeno comes down off the screen. A defender gets caught this time inside, so Zeno pops behind it. And that's the versatility of reading that screen. A defender goes under, you go over. Russell Robinson looks inside, gets it to Arthur. The quick turnaround. That's Sol Jagic who will pick up the foul. Monday night means a big night of college basketball on ESPN. It's Big Monday presented by Bud Light. 7 o'clock Eastern, UConn will take on the Louisville Cardinals. Then at 9 o'clock, Fran and I will be in Stillwater for Bedlam, Oklahoma, in town to take on Oklahoma State. The games on Monday also available in high definition. Keep those galoshes out. Heading up into more of what we have here in Lubbock today. A lot of ice the last couple of days out here on the South Plain. Chalmers goes to the bench. Missed them both. Ron, if you think about it, after those early turnovers, Texas Tech has kept Kansas out of transition and for the most part away from the basket. Burgess all the way to the hoop and it partially blocked who touched it last looking for help it's going to stay with Texas Tech 18 ticks left on the clock and the hardest thing about guarding a motion offense is you never know where your opponent is going to move it's random movement with some rules Jackson still looking for his first point back to Dora Dora that's put it on the floor and that's going to be a double dribble and there's a timeout on the floor thanks to Clay so let's take a timeout 353 left in the opening half from snowy Lubbock Texas Red Raiders lead it by four Raspberry iced tea. Yeah, that's great. And it's good. I wonder why why tea? What do you mean? I mean, of all the letters you could pick from, why tea? Why not raspberry iced M or any oh. of the other like 48 letters? First of all, that's way too many letters. I and mean, I know how many letters there are in the alphabet. May I sub respond before you finish? Sure. Do you? Your ultimate drink stop. Drive into Sonic for a raspberry iced tea with a touch of sweet berry flavor. And try one today with a chicken club wrap. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Dave Rebson in the studio. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, Tom Brennan, Doug Gottlieb will join me. Alabama proving it is not how you start, but how you finish that is important. We'll share how Texas responded after the heartbreaking triple overtime loss to Oklahoma State. And Wisconsin taking its highest ranking ever into Champaign. Tight one there. It's all coming up at the half, Ron. All righty. Coach Brennan standing by. Look forward to hear from you, uh, gentlemen, coming up. Bench points in this ball game. It's interesting. Texas Tech 14 9 for KU and the KU averages about 28 points off their bench every ball game. And it's been guys like Prince and Dora today for Bob Knight off his bench. Collins. Whistle and a foul on Collins. And it's very hard to drive into that lane versus Tech's defense which is fairly stationary in about 17 foot setup so not much room to maneuver. Russell Robinson will come out now and this has been the three man change off that uh, Bill has started doing. Collins is in the ball game. He was there with Russell who they had been replacing each other. Now he's got the three man rotation with the guards. That's a great situation for him. It is and he now jumps on to Jackson. So let's see if he can now handle his share of the load defensively. Jackson to bounce her into Soljagic. Back to Dora. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Soljagic. Left hand misses it. Pretty move. Didn't get it to go. 
The lob inside to Khan looking for his first points, and there they are at the 255 mark. And he really had to earn those, Ron, because again, he drew a lot of traffic from the white jerseys and a good soft move. For as good a job as KU has done on Jackson, Tech has done an equally good job on Khan in this first half. Well, they really have. They played off those perimeter scorers. Forced a lot of jump shots, and that will make Bill Self happy. Jackson, that's a couple of times. He's had a three, and he's passed it up. Four seconds, three seconds. Got to be knocked out of bounds. And two seconds on the clock. It'll go to 35 now with KU getting the basketball back. Now, this first basket by Khan, look how much traffic he draws in there. Siljagic went for the steal, didn't get it. So the junior from Tomsk, Siberia, who we've seen mature around over the last four games, got a good look. That's eight turnovers against the Red Raiders. Dora was just called yep. for the foul. Well, Danny Hooker let the first bump go, but he picked up the second one pretty quickly. Texas Tech has not double team con today, but they've played soft defense on the perimeter. Well, that shot was there. Wouldn't stay. Rush on the follow. Saw freshman from Dallas picking up some loose change. Arthur with eight first half points. And a foul this time on Collins. Boy, I thought we were out in traffic when I saw yep. this pile up underneath the, uh, the basket here. Just good physical play by both teams. Rush comes up empty. And then Slim Shady out of Dallas' South Oak Cliff High School. Eight champions his senior year. Robinson back into the lineup. Trap in the corner. Jackson has to call a timeout. One thing I've liked about Jarius Jackson today, Ron, is he hasn't forced a lot of shots, but you'll see the traffic he draws, see the double team, really in no man's land, wise to call timeout. Well, you see what the position that, that Russell Robinson has there, it's impossible for a step through. You're right. As a young man, you've talked about that a lot of times. He learned really good basics of defense in New York City under his high school coach. Yes, he did. Mo Hicks at Rice High School. And Robinson, when you look at this team, really the least likely guy you need to worry about in terms of scoring points. Yeah. But a glue guy and a guy that does a lot of different things and certainly defensively uh, makes his presence felt. So we're tied at 28, 139 left in this opening half. And I think it bodes well for Tech that they can play this first half and not have any offensive production from Jackson. Zeno has to dish it off to Prince. It'll stay with the Red Raiders. 22 on the shot clock. making sure he does a little preventive officiating contact underneath Jackson well, down for a hand check well tonight college basketball continues on ESPN that is young and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets take on Tyler Hensgrove and the North Carolina Tar Heels Saturday primetime presented by direct TV all a part of student spirit week on ESPN North Carolina like Kansas a very deep basketball team second foul on Russell Robinson and now Case is going to come into the ball game. Jeremy, a junior out of McAllister, Oklahoma, trying to make sure that uh, Robinson doesn't pick up uh, a ticky-tacky third foul just before halftime. I checked with Jeremy yesterday. McAllister has been hit very hard by that ice storm. A lot of power outages. Just want to wish everybody well back there. Texas Tech on top by one. Rush 
Falling away, won't go. Here comes Burgess. Rush, only four first half points. One of those, the jam. Uh, he's not getting out in, on, in highway traffic today. Con with the foul. Texas Tech has used I'm some sorry. pick and roll basketball this year to free Jarius Jackson, and that time he put the big guy in a precarious situation. But they called it on case. Uh huh. Con looked like when the teacher walks in the room, <laughs> he looked like the guilty the guilt, kid. Yep. There's the first point by Jackson at the 53 second mark of the first half. being down eight nothing and now you've got a three-point lead well this crowd is loving it you see how sloughed in the white jerseys are nothing inside pass too tall off the fingertips of Arthur rush not happy with him but it was rush's fault that pass was way too tall and Ron, I don't want to belabor this point, but when you talk to coaches, one of the things that is a, a maxim in coaching is don't give Bob Knight more than two or three or four days to get ready for an opponent. We've seen that today. Well, he was very disappointed after that Saturday loss down in Waco. Many people thought they could and should have won that ball game. And this is a tough stretch for them coming up. to Jackson four seconds Clef had the ball go through the hands and it's stolen back by Burgess we are at halftime so Daryl Dora 10 first half points to help ignite the Red Raiders of Texas Tech at a three-point lead at halftime it's Tech 31 Kansas 28 now let's join Dave Repson Tom Brennan and Doug Gottlieb with the UPS halftime report it's Texas Tech looking for just its third win ever in 19 games against Kansas it's spirit week big 12 action this afternoon from uh, the USA, the United Spirit Arena on the campus of Texas Tech. It's a three-point Tech lead, uncharacteristically high in turnovers, nine for both clubs, but the defense has been very good by both teams. Well, it really has, Ron, and Texas Tech has done a nice job of keeping Kansas out of the lane, only four free throws by Kansas. And on the other hand, Kansas has done a wonderful job guarding Jarius Jackson, a 20-point scorer. But one of the keys for, for Texas Tech, Ron, is watch how dangerous the screener is in motion offense. We say this all the time. The screener is most likely to get open when he sets a great screen. Watch Zeno set the back screen, and Rush cheats out just a little bit, and that opens up the lane for the slip and the basket at the rim by Martin Zeno. Good execution of the motion offense. So it'll be Texas Tech on offense to begin this second half. And as Fran mentioned just before we went to intermission, not a bad position for Texas Tech considering they fell behind 8-0 early. And a turnover to open the second half. Dora with an errant pass. Similar to way Texas Tech opened the first half. One bright spot for Texas Tech, only out rebounded by two by this bigger, more physical front line. Just with the foul. Well, we've watched Kansas so much lately, Ron, in both halves. Bill Self likes to go inside to Sasha Khan and establish that inside game. Khan. Over the back, right. Well, and there it was. They pounded it inside to the big guy. 
Couldn't get it done. He's much better moving over his left shoulder. This time, Dora forces him back to the baseline and a little bit awkward move by the big fella. Keep your eye now on those white jerseys. There's a two-man game being played out on each side of the floor. Jackson, too hard off the back iron. Tipped up and in, I thought, gone. I think you're right. Sasha Khan. That's not the way Bill Self wanted him to get going. More points for the opposition than for his yep. own team. And this was not just your basic tip. This was a, about an eight-footer. See the shot by Jackson comes off. And Sasha Khan trying to fight for position. Knocks that ball in. They have really crowded the lane today. Texas Tech making it hard to throw it in there. So the turnover by KU and the largest lead of the afternoon by Texas Tech at five. So much fun to watch this offense from a high angle. See the cutting and screening. You never know where your opponent is going to be. Shot clock is down to six. Zeno looks for help. Falling away. That barely drew iron. Excellent possession by Kansas and a nice job again by Rush. I'll tell you, the last, going back to the first half, the last three possessions by Tech, they've just smothered them. They had no shot. You're right. Now remember, Kansas is one of the best defensive teams in the country. Rush. A little too soft. And Kansas has not forced up a lot of threes today, Ron. Jackson, high screen, gets the three. Once again, he worked off the screen. Robinson went under. Jackson went, played a little peekaboo. Little peekaboo here, Ron. As you see Dora with the high screen, first three-pointer at the 1745 mark for Jackson. Australian Open. Coverage continues tomorrow at 10 a.m. on ESPN2. Welcome to my casa. It's your boy, B. Can. This here's my foyer. This is my game room. This right here is my new suede couch. To the pool, baby. These are my ladies. Monday, Tuesday, when? Hey, man, who are you? Steve. You part of the crew? No, I'm just here for the Bud Light. Who gave you that? When did you give them that? Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Yeah, this is where I spend most of my... Man, put down my papaya! Hey, for Epson with you, want to get you updated on what's going on with Arizona and UCLA. Great matchup in L.A. And then Mac Michael Roll hitting the three right there for UCLA as they are on top by six right now. Flawless got 15. LSU getting it handed to him by Arkansas, Ron. Well, I'll tell you what, Dave, we have seen uh, Arkansas up close and personal, and they are an extremely capable basketball team. They remind me a lot of the Texas team and the fact they could lose by 21 night yep. and win by 20 the next night. You're right. He's on inside, going inside, out of the timeout. I think that's big for them because I think they need Sasha to step back up as he has the last three ball games. Every now and then, Kansas will pull the zone out of their back pocket. Let's keep an eye on this. They've won some games, but they played this zone two years ago. Texas Tech shredded it. Zeno not there. Dora the tip not there. Prince tried for the rebound, and it came down to Julian Wright. We mentioned this. That's on Dora. That's yep. number three. Bill Self made his feelings known in that last time out. We got to get the ball inside. Now Tech goes zone off the inbound, switches back to man.
touch on Michael Prince. Even though there was a foul call, Michael Prince dropped off Julian Wright to clog up that lane. Two on Prince. Three team fouls on the Tech here in the early going to the second half. Rush. That pass almost hit Sasha in the head. Yes. <laughs> it was so so low. That will be an offensive foul against Russell Robinson. That's three on him. Again, Ron, the frustration by Kansas right now is that Tech has taken their defense and softened, softened it up and not allowing a lot of dribble penetration. Well, they are showing two on Robinson, but I thought Bill took him out just before halftime when he got his second foul. Keep your eye on Zeno now. He had great effect versus the zone two years ago by driving the baseline. Bill Self has used this 3-2 zone in the past to change momentum. Tech has had a, done a good job of running that offense today versus man. Dora, free throw line. 12 points for him now. Boy, does he have that shot fake down. Four years of doing that every day. Lifted his defender and had an easy 15-footer. Oh, great feed, and Julian Wright is right there. The first time today, Texas Tech has trapped. No rotation down from the weak side, and Prince's man, Wright, got the easy basket. So it's back to a six-point lead. That was really nice by Khan, and Wright was just unattended. Mm -hmm. Zeno. Back to Dora for three. Well, deja vu for Dallas. Two years ago. It's going to be harder for Kansas to score in the half court. Rush strong to the hoop, and it was as good as a pass to Julian Wright, who was right there. Ron, I think that was a pass. Yes. Yep. He went up and he saw Wright unattended. Dora. Getting a little greedy. But he has been on fire. Inside to right, working against Prince. Left-hander wouldn't go. Challenged by Burgess. Charlie Burgess picked up the foul for Texas Tech, his third. 41-34, Texas Tech on top. Junior, now that you're selling yourself for a buck, you're going to meet a lot of girls. What? Here, take this. What's this? It's an extra napkin. Put it in your wallet. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Love. Whopper Junior for a buck. Bringing some attitude to the BK Value Man. A lot of ice, a lot of snow the last 48 hours here on the South Plain. And right now, Texas Tech, they fell behind 8-0 to begin the ball game. This man right here, Daryl Dora, with 15 points. And as a result, it's a 41-34 Tech lead. Well, we remember this shot. Valentine's Day, 2005. Double overtime, one of the great games in Big 12 history. Of course, we had a couple more this week. And Aaron Miles is... Desperation shot goes awry. And in fact, that is the only win by Bob Knight over the Kansas Jayhawks coming right here at United Spirit Arena on Valentine's Night two years ago. Arthur muscles his way inside too hard. Dora comes away with the basketball, and Burgess will push uh, it up. Great set play right there off the timeout. The freshman misfired. Zeno for three. Nope. <laughs> Collins dishes it off to Arthur. Now, we've seen Collins today a number of times, and that's his strength, his ability to get into the heart of the defense. Back to man-to-man -man now for the Jayhawks. Bob 
Oshko has checked into the ball game. Long range bomber, number 20. He needs to warm up a little bit. The crowd wants him to shoot it, but. Eight seconds on that shot clock. Inside to Zeno, muscles it up, and he gets it. By not faking, he actually faked rush out because he went right to the rim. Ball will go back to Texas Tech. Watch this, Ron. He caught it right away and went. Rush waiting for a head fake. And good players know sometimes by not faking, you actually fake the defender out. He just sprinted right by yep. him, didn't he? Seven point Texas Tech lead. Now they got Darrell Arthur on Boscule. They've got to be careful. Inside to Kahn. Right hander kisses it off the glass very nicely. One thing that's going to make Bill Self feel good is they started to get the ball to the paint. He's got six points now. got rush in the air and he came down on him for the foul now it would be really hard to have this kind of court awareness but if Burgess could have thrown the ball at the rim he would have gotten a chance to get two free throws keep your eye on this here he knows there's going to be contact just not quick enough of throwing that ball up by dribbling it he actually allowed rush to foul him on the floor first foul on rush third team foul and the ball stolen by the Jayhawks. Outlet pass to Chalmers against Voskul, and he will miss it. Well, that's as good as a charge. Voskul made Chalmers go sideways. Ron Franklin, Fran Frischella, coming to you from United Spirit Arena in Lubbock, Texas. Two days of snow. Kansas got here a day early knowing they might not be able to arrive yesterday as did we and right now Texas Tech after falling behind eight to nothing to start the game Tech leads it by five. Burgess at the other end. this possession Ron but I'm a little surprised now Jackson hasn't come up shooting off those screens he has been very reticent mm -hmm. he really has he has done anything but be greedy Burgess for three doesn't shoot a lot of threes but he shoots over 50 percent from the season that's his 19th on the year Bill Self for the 32nd timeout. Not happy as good as they've been defensively. There have been a couple of lapses like that one that he uh, wanted to visit with his team about. See, I don't know if I leave Burgess right there if I'm Chalmers because Vosky is being guarded by Arthur. There's no way he's going to the rim. But by leaving Burgess, Chalmers allows the open three. Well, tonight college basketball continues on ESPN as Georgia Tech will square off with the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Saturday primetime presented by Direct TV is part of Student Spirit Week on ESPN. It all begins at 9 Eastern time. How about this lineup, Ron? Three guards, basically Zeno a guard, four guards, and Dora for Texas Tech. Well, that opening five was shaky, but since then, they have not been shaky. Rush, same spot that he burned Iowa State a week ago today, and this time it was an air ball. Strong to the other end, whistle and a foul. Burgess is going to go to the line for a couple. Foul number three, Whistle Robinson. Russell Robinson with his third foul. 
Dave Revson in our Sports Center in game studios getting you updated on LSU and Arkansas. Hogs had lost three straight coming in, but playing very well. Here's Stephen Hill, the follow jam. They're on top by 13, final four minutes. And Arizona and UCLA, it's Aaron Aflalo for the Bruins. UCLA up six on the reeling Wildcats, Ron. All righty. And this is not a scene, fellas, that you would normally anticipate out on the South Plain in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, I mean, they have not gotten as much snow as they thought, but far more ice than they wanted, which has made driving in parts of the area just really treacherous. Miss on the first one, Burgess gets a second opportunity. Swishes that one and makes it a nine-point ball game, Red Raiders. Now Bob Knight today playing the percentages. Giving Kansas those open jumpers. Packed in defense. Robinson. Once again, Rod, great baseline help by Texas Tech. Rush inside to Arthur. He traveled. Still going to play Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State two times each. And that's why this game is so important for the Red Raiders. This is a resume builder. They're 13 and 5. Zeno, the cutter, and he was fouled by Rush. Might as well give him that nickname, Zeno the cutter, because he's a nightmare in that offense. Another ball fake. That one didn't yes, work. <laughs> and, you, and you got shot clock now, so you don't have to take that quick one. Yeah. I'm going to say that ball went off of Burgess. Burgess a little careless that time, and the freshman from Chicago poked it loose. College with really good hustle. That's. He's a walking example of when you stop eating fast food and yes. lose 15 pounds, <laughs> what it can do for you. He's still a squatty buddy, but he's also very, very quick and athletic. Missed the shot right there, jinxed him completely. But he is very good at both ends of the floor. He was looking like Jerome Bettis early in the year. <laughs> Dora for our, nope, not oh. for three. Oh. Got it to Zeke. That was an opportunity for a three-point play. But once again, as Dora went up into the shot, Zeno moved off a screen on the baseline. And a little bit of mental telepathy. Two guys have played together for three years, and a great find by Dora. Watch this pass, Ron. That's four fouls on Russell Robinson. You see, and didn't get a chance to see the end, but uh, good. So Russell will come out and come to the bench. May have to sit for a little bit, 943 left. But when you're Bill Self and you've got the luxury of those three quality players, uh, might sneak him back in a little bit earlier. Well, 11 point lead for Tech. We might see him earlier. But again, he doesn't give you the offense the other two do, so he can go different ways. Crowd is up and making a lot of noise, as you might imagine. Once you get the trap on him and right. What a nice job of running the offense. Right helped out the man who had been trapped, and Chalmers just got it right to him. Well, Burgess, a breakdown on the weak side. He must rotate over. Tech has done a nice job of sealing off that baseline. Zeno back. I think that pass was intended for someone else, but he he didn't fumble it. Dora for three. Nope. Just a tad flat, but a good look. Yeah, not much arc on that one, was there? Rush for three. Got it. Very smooth. Good rhythm shot by the sophomore from Kansas City. Jackson behind the back with the dribble. Got this crowd excited. 
That's the most demonstrative thing he's done today, though. He has not been really quick with the shot. Well, you're right, Ron. I've watched him the whole game. He almost looks tired, but he'll probably make this one. <laughs> oh, well. Jarius Jackson, that's pretty demonstrative right there. Prove the analyst wrong. That's okay. But what I like about him, Ron, is he has not forced a lot of shots. No, he, he has done anything but that. Yep. You're right. Vasco picked up the foul, his first. You see, Collins went over the top of Dora. Jackson went under, and there was way too much space for Collins to recover. Well, talk about large things in this ball game. 16 fouls on KU, five on Texas Tech. Here is Rush. Wanted to jam it, didn't get it, and right there to put it back in. Whoa. That is at least 10, if not a dozen points that KU has scored from point blank range in the second half alone. Yes. And really off an offensive rebound. Yes. Shots like that, your shooting offense percentage is going to be pretty high. You're right. Dora. Gave you the little pump fake again. He's got 15 points. 17. Add two more. Collins. Chalmers for three. Nope. Dora rebounds. Nice job by Burgess running out and contesting what seemed to be an open Chalmers. Very underrated play. Nine point Texas Tech lead. Now the clock begins to speed if you're Bill Self. We're about to go under seven minutes left in this ball game. Lazy pass and it's stolen. Right with a good defensive effort. Finger roll. Can't get it. And Bosco tries to steal it. He got it. Got Time a timeout. Timeout Red Raiders. Well, he bound out Jarius Jackson on that soft pass, but how about Bosco? Doesn't have to score to make some really good plays. Wow. And let's check in quickly with Dave Repson. Dave. All right, Ron, want to check out Indiana and UConn. Hoosiers had the big lead early on the road, but this one tight down the stretch, tied at 62. Joey Shaw hits. It is 64-64 right now, Ron. All right, Dave. Watch Bosco here on a good hustle play. Well, he's a guy that has already etched himself in Texas Tech basketball law, going back to that win number 880 against New Mexico. And here is an effort against New Mexico in January the 1st. Yep. Right here in Lubbock, you see him get a little underneath, reverse it, gets free again, had nine points, three for three from the field, and the head coach, yep. his record didn't mind. It didn't matter to him. He wanted to say this young man was the cause of the victory. He held him up like the middleweight champ of Lubbock that night. Young man from L.D. Bell High School produced an NFL quarterback, Tommy Maddox. Yes, sir. 17 points for Dora, five rebounds. Now they've gone to a little bit different type of motion with Jackson working the baseline. Zeno. Texas Tech nice. using all the clock that they can. Score the basket and a foul, I believe, on Chalmers. Yes. What a pass by Bosco. And Jackson made the play work because he never stopped moving in the motion offense. So let's take one more look at it as we head to break. You see the great feed by Bosco. Jackson scores and he'll go to the line. 11 point tech lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Volkswagen GTI, Automobile Magazine's 2007 Automobile of the Year. Well, I don't have to tell you, we're looking at a shot of the Lubbock Airport. How's your flight looking so far? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to settle in here in Lubbock tonight if I need to, and it won't be bad. Coach Bob Knight sitting down. And you need to understand when you see the R, the average margin of losses, 25.8 against Kansas. Folks, 
They fell behind 8-0 in this ball game, and according to our numbers, since then it is a 56 to 37 run by Texas Tech. Texas Tech outstanding game plan today. They've kept Kansas out of transition. They've bottled up the inside, and they've been very proficient on the offensive end. And it hasn't been just Jarius Jackson. Twelve-point lead. Now, if you're Kansas, you've got to figure out ways to score quickly. And on a made basket, watch how KU will go immediately to a press situation. I think you're right. It's hard to drive baseline today. Tech has really bottled it up with good help. Chalmers dished it off, double pump, counted for Robinson, back in the ball game with four fouls. That shows the trust that the head coach has in that young man, the junior out of New York. How about this with five and a half to go, and they go zone now. This will allow Texas Tech to work some clock, but let's see where they get their shots from. Keep your eye on Zeno. He's been very good against the zone. Big margin for Texas Tech at the free throw line. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Jackson. Wow. Chalmers, Ron. That means a new shot clock. It does with five seconds showing on the shot clock. Uh, I think they'll shoot him now. Yep. That is a not a smart play. You foul at the very end of the shot clock, and Mario Chalmers needs to know better than that. What a break for Texas Tech. You know, they were not going to get a good shot, Ron. No, they were not. And that's what Bill is just saying to uh, to Mr. Rose, the referee. He's saying, hey, what was that call with five mm -hmm. seconds on the shot clock? I think Daryl Dora has played out <laughs> of his mind in this ball game. Well, why not? He's got selective memory. He's got 19 points. His all-time high is 22. Rush. Lost it. Goes on the floor. And the arrow says it'll stay right where it is. Well, the, the law of averages has really helped Tech today. They played the percentages. They're not giving up anything inside. Forcing Kansas to shoot from the perimeter. And when they do drive, a lot of traffic. So we got 5-12 left in our ball game. 18 fouls against KU, five against Texas Tech. Foul number 20, Alan Bosco. Bosco, his second foul. And now 16 fouls against Texas Tech. And that's going to become huge because the Jayhawks have virtually no points from the free throw line in this afternoon ball game. Too hard. Great hustle. Collins. And how many times have we said he comes off the bench and an immediate spark is given? And there's that press you talked about. That was not a pass, but it was perfect. Oh, he hyped it. It came right between his legs. They went shotgun on that play. <laughs> Not the way Bob Knight drew it up. There's the zone again. So you've got four guards out here now. Zeno in the middle. Partially blocked. Caught, and then nobody blocked out Zeno. And Bosco comes away with it. Now the, no, that the ball hit up. iron. That ball hit iron. Now they'll go right to the monitor and check. And if it did hit the rim, they'll reset it, and it'll be a huge break for Tech. Okay, we'll get a look at it first, as Larry Rose does as well. There's the shot that looks partially blocked. Now, from, the, now from that yeah. angle, I, I, I can't honestly tell from there, Ron. I thought that it grazed it. I could be yeah. very, very wrong. Yeah. I couldn't see it from that angle. And I see Danny Hooker and Larry Rose now doing the same thing we're doing. See, this is a tough angle to really tell. You've got to watch sometimes the rotation of the basketball. 
there's a better angle. Yes. No, you know yeah, what? It, it changed direction. Run it back, guys, because that might have hit the backboard. Show that to us again. Watch this, Ron. Now, is it the backboard it hits, or is it the rim? No, it's the rim. Show it again. See, see I, I thought it hit the backboard. I, the reason I thought it hit the rim, it yeah. took a side spin. Yeah. Instead of right here. Now you can't. That's the next shot. That's the next shot. Uh, gentlemen in the truck, can we take one more look at the first angle and see which way the ball spins? If it spins sideways, that's the rim that it hit. They're going to give the ball. They're going to give the ball to Texas Tech. Well, not that, but the closer angle that we yeah. could, Eric. And they're going to they're going to get it with 32 on the clock. So, so they it's a moot point. I don't think it hit the rim, Ron. I really don't. But it doesn't matter now. It's moot. And a break for Tech. They'll get to use some more clock. Burgess to Dora. Four guards now makes it very difficult to guard. A lot of ball movement. Now we'll get it one more time. There's the shot. Look how far it is. No, you're right. That hit the backboard. Now, don't blame the officials because they may not have had the angle. That angle right there yeah. would have would have clarified a lot to you. Okay, so got to put four minutes back on the clock. Kansas now has to score quickly, jump in that press. Look for some high ball screens. Ten point lead, Texas Tech. Plenty of time for the Jayhawks with their offensive prowess. Collins will drive it back to Rush. And Rush, not there. Bosco clears for the rebound. Instead of going straight up, he tried to draw contact. So let's take a timeout. Foul against KU. Ten point lead, Red Raiders. We'll be right back. Want to get you updated on the game between Indiana and Connecticut going down to the wire in Hartford. Roderick Wilmot from just inside the stripe rolls one home. Hoosiers up two, final 24 seconds. Don't forget Carolina, Georgia Tech tonight in prime time and game day live from Chapel Hill kicks it all off at 8 Eastern Ron. This is what we got three minutes and 42 seconds left and a 10 point margin Texas Tech 59 to 49 and Vasco very fortunate that the foul was called on Chalmers because the double team they were about to steal that basketball from him. I think Bill Self uh, echoes your sentiments exactly. What a game this guy has played. Didn't play the first half, so you know he had to be a little bit stiff. That four guard offense, very effective. Sixty-one forty-nine, Texas Tech. Again, they've got to score quickly. Texas Tech will do a lot of switching on the perimeter. Screen out high by Arthur. Three-pointer, Collins, he's got it. Boy, is he starting to become their go-to guy? Whoa, uh, <laughs> is he ever? Well, they try to set up their press. Timeout called by Texas Tech. Well, Collins came off that screen, created some space. The big man, I think it was Dora, tried to step out, didn't get it done. Dora a little late. Burgess comes over, 
Soft freshman does it again. Well, back-to-back -back thrillers by Kansas, and we have been with them on both of them. First of all, last week at Iowa State, look at Rush with the steal. Picked his pocket, doesn't feel the man to his right, scores with the jam. 68-64, KU wins it. Then against Missouri, Collins buries the three. Now watch defensively who comes up. Rush is right there. The shot is short, so he not only helped them out offensively, defensively, he was there to help close the door two games in a row. Well, you're right. Very underrated defender. And now keep this in mind, too. Ron Collins scored seven of Kansas's last nine in that win over Missouri. There's the trap. Steps through, and the foul is called on Collins. Smart play by Jackson. Collins and Chalmers never came together. Jackson slid through that and drew the contact. Third foul. And on it's the freshman. I'm sorry, double bonus for the Red Raiders. 16 fouls against Texas Tech. So the next one, then KU will go into the one and one situation. One of the things to watch for on Kansas's possessions is because Texas Tech switches. They give you very little open space. Screens are designed to create space. Boy, he missed them both. And you talk about uncharacteristic. Jarius Jackson to miss back-to-back -back in a situation like this is at the other end. Scoring is Russell Robinson, and it is a seven-point ball game. Bosco, that foul is on Arthur. But now... Again, double bonus, and it's a situation where they got to make them. Ron Franklin along with uh, Fran Frischella coming to you from what would have been a sold-out United Spirit Arena today if it were not for the ice storm and then the snowstorm which followed that. But the ones that are here paid the price, and they're glad they did right now. It is a 61-54 lead, Red Raiders. How about this guy? 10 of 11 on the season from the foul line and did not play in the first half of this game. Bill Self's ball club has only gotten the aid of two free throws. Two of four from the line today. Vasco misses the sex, so that's three of the last four that they have missed. See the high ball screens are trying to create quick opportunities. Three-pointer, wow. Robinson. Well. He only shoots in the mid-20s. We saw him make two big ones against Missouri and then again tonight. How about this, Ron? Russell Robinson comes in shooting about 29%. See, there's a lot of dribbling and ball screening out top. Burgess goes under, and Robinson knocks it down. So two minutes and 42 seconds left exactly what happened when the timeout was called but Danny Hooker one of the umpires he was talking with Bill Self and all of a sudden he whipped back around to Bill and pointed at him and said I've had enough well and I I, I think Bill's had enough <laughs> <laughs> is how that exchange yeah, happened exactly. you know yes. 37 minutes neither one gets a Christmas card that's right <laughs> But now you've got a lot of time left in this game. Kansas has done a good job in the last minute and a half of speeding this game up with pressure. Yes, they have. And you mentioned how critical those free throws are for Texas Tech. Whoa. Burgess tried to steal it and hit on the sideline. Ron, that's way too long a pass. That ball is in the air too long from Burgess to Jackson. Good hustle by KU. Five-point ball game. Collins back on the wing to rush. Has been murdered getting into the lane. They uh -oh. leave Rush all alone, and he cans it free. It's a two-point ball game, 62 to 60. Watch this pressure now. It has really bothered Tech. See now you can't milk as much clock, and it becomes a one-possession game for the Jayhawks. Under two minutes to play. Now Kansas has gone four small. Dora had his pocket pick, taken away by Collins. What a Dishes pass. it off to Arthur.
Center. We're tied at 62. 140 left in our ball game. Collins has been the difference in the final three minutes. They have not been able to keep him out of the lane. The fifth ranked team in the country trying to show exactly why they hold that lofty position. Chalmers. Unbelievable. On the offensive rebound. Watch Kansas. They look like Buddy Holly in an ice storm. Look at this. Well, I was as shocked as you were and everybody else here. They thought, well, certainly they're going to run the clock down That's right. here. And he saw that uh, Kansas kind of <laughs> relaxed, just as you said. There was an area to penetrate the lane, and he did it. Jackson looked like that kid in the candy store. He got the Hershey bar, <laughs> and then he took off for open space. Well, he missed his last two free throws. Watch this, Ron. They're running their offense. Time running down. See, Dor Dora shoots it. Now watch the offensive rebound. So everybody Zeno. thinks, yep, Zeno comes up with it. Now watch Kansas. Everybody is looking for their man. Keep your eye on Jackson. Guts of a burglar. See, their back is turned. Yes. It's a perfect, absolutely perfect move on his part. Boy, that is a huge play. to play in our ball game. Collins thrown to the hook, and it's back to a one-point game. Here comes full court pressure again. They've had no answer, Texas Tech, for Collins' penetration ability. Tech with a one-point lead, and they cannot be tentative as that ball there. Boston on the foul. Credit Jarius Jackson with the curl. It's been all about ball movement today for Texas Tech. Bill Self asking for a timeout. The official just now saw him and Larry Rose calls it at 25.8. The ball will come in from the sideline right here in front of us and it's a three-point Tech lead. All because Jarius Jackson cut hard into the lane. Zeno found him. Blue shirts went with him and Bosque all alone. Coach Knight was coming down to ask where the ball was going to be tossed in, and it'll be. Watch this, Ron. Watch the cut. That cut sets up Voskiel to go right to the rim, get the easy two. So credit Jackson with the assist as well. And the shock on the face of a couple of big men for KU, who Voskiel kind of sneaks through the back door and gets the putback. Let's take a look at Collins. And a package on Sharon Collins. What boy, what a ball player. Well, he's got the ability to knock down those shots, but most importantly, his penetration ability has really set up some easy baskets. Ron, you remember how hard it's been for Kansas to score today until the last three or four minutes. So credit this young man, Collins, with that ability to break down a defense. Penetrate, penetrate, yep. penetrate. We talked about that in that Missouri game. Penetration is probably the Achilles heel of most defenses. So hard to guard a man off the dribble. Okay, now, if you're Kansas, you've got enough time. Personally, you don't have to shoot the three unless it's wide open. For, I'd love to get it to Collins and let him get into the lane because even if you score two, what's been effective for Kansas here? The press. So if you score and get the easy two, you've got time to set up your press. And boy, it has been 
right at the end of the first half we talked about the last two sequences the Texas Tech had the basketball they simply could not get a shot off. You're right. But right now 67 64 with 25.8 seconds left. Robinson will inbound it right here in front of us. I think the worst thing Kansas could do is shoot a contested three here. It's got to be open inside of the play. Screen out high. Collins pulls back. Three on the way. Not there. Rush and the foul. Wow. Burgess gets it. All along at the other end. Zeno. Three pointer, not there. And Texas Tech has upset the number five team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks, 69 to 64. Some happy, happy people in this arena. And right now, they may be a little careful because this could get out of hand. We got more folks on the floor than uh, the floor can handle right now. Hugs going on in every direction. As the last time that Bob Knight's ball club knocked off KU was on Valentine's Day two years ago, with Daryl Dora hit a desperation three. Knight being helped out of the arena along with his assistant coaches. Friend, I know you were trying to get Coach Knight and he was getting mobbed yes. by the youngsters. Your, your feelings on this ball game here? Well, I thought that, you know, they played the percentages. They had a great game plan. They forced Kansas to shoot the ball from the perimeter. They kept it out of the paint for as long as possible. And I thought Texas Tech, without Jackson being the main guy offensively today, got a huge lift from guys like Zeno, Gora, and of course that underrated guy that's helped them win a couple of ball games this year, Voskul. So another big part of the ball game is the fact that Texas Tech only committed six second half fouls. Again, our final score in regulation, Texas Tech 69, KU 64. Up next to the ESPN Super Bowl Top 10. Now, I'm Ron Franklin for Fran Frischella and our entire crew. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long, everybody, from an icy but yet warm Lubbock, Texas.